Hello everybody, Bill Harrison here with Harden Power Systems. Wanted to take a few minutes and introduce you to the Commander 7100. Um, this machine is uh, an addition to our Commander line. Um, we've made similar devices for the, uh, for the 857 and the 891. Uh, trying to do the same thing for the ICOM 7100, uh, I suppose is, is an obvious thing to try to do but it was not a particularly easy thing to do. Um, people who are familiar with this radio are probably familiar with some of the challenges related to the form factor of the head unit. Um, it's, it's beautifully done and it's a, it's a, a pleasure to use, it, especially if it's sitting on a bench. Um, but whether it's a vehicle mount or a go box mount or something like that, um, the unusual form factor of the head unit uh, presents a bit of a, a challenge. It's a little unusual. Um, now that said, happily we were able to do it. It fits in a fat 50 ammunition can, uh, just like the other commanders do. Um, and, and that said, I'm going to go ahead and slide it out of the can so we can talk a little bit more uh, about exactly how it's put together. Now like, like a lot of our gear, um, uh, the, the, the chassis or the, the structure of the, of the machine is, is primarily high density polyethylene. This is half inch thick slabs basically that we CNC machine um, uh, and it allows us to almost build it almost like, like uh, people build furniture with mortise and tenon joints and, and uh, rabbits and, and radiuses and, and counter bores. Um, it's, uh, it's a great material to work with. It's extremely durable. Um, and we've had great luck with it. Uh, uh, and in a sense, the machine's a bit of a hybrid. You know, you'll have HDPE, uh, half inch, some that are quarter inch. You'll have some features that have been 3D printed, um, like the, the carriers for our rubber standoffs here. Um, uh, so, um, I suppose probably one of the neat things, and probably the thing that, that, uh, that is, is, I don't know, maybe the most interesting, I mentioned the, the form factor of, of the head unit, and you, you can see it is an, an odd shape. Now, it, again, it works well on the bench. It's a nice viewing angle, and it's a compact um, setup, and you've got everything you need right here on the head unit. Um, but it does make it a bit of a, a trick to, to mount it in a secure way. What we did, and it might be a little hard to see, because it's black on black on black, and I apologize for that, but if you look in here, this little V-shaped channel, uh, that, that, that of course mimics the profile of the, of the head unit. And then there's a small rubber bumper here that's inset into that 3D printed part. And it took a little trial and error, but what we wound up being able to do is when you press the head unit in, you feel it push back. And when you press just a little bit harder, it slides down those rubber bumpers that are kind of pinching and it winds up with a, a very secure uh, uh, attachment and still very easy to remove. Um, works nice. One thing I would say is, of course, we know that, that uh, space was a challenge on this machine and the separation cable that ICOM provides, it's nice that they gave, gave you one that's so long but I kind of wish they didn't give you one that was so long, not in this application. Um, and I, I've, I've found some online, you can uh, get shorter cables and you certainly could shorten this yourself if it was gonna be dedicated to this box. What it amounts to though is for this application, if this thing was three, four feet long, um, that probably is just about ideal because that's enough to remove the head unit from the machine, set it on the, the bench, uh, and, and operate it like that. Um, now that said, there's no reason why you couldn't operate the radio like it is here, just sitting in the, in the commander. Um, so in any event, that's how we, we secured the, the 7100 head unit. Um, now what's also, um, I think, interesting is how the radio itself is secured. Um, and probably to show you that well, even though it might take a minute, um, I need to unscrew the antenna leads and let me power this down before I mess with those. Um, 
I'll unscrew the leads. And these antenna extensions are made for us uh, by an outfit out of California called Wi-Fi Experts. And I'll tell you, if you need, you know, we tend to buy quite a lot of this. Um, and of course, there's there's corresponding discounts. You start buying a bunch, but even if you're buying one or two custom cables, these guys are pretty reasonable. They're easy to deal with. You find them online just with a, a search for Wi-Fi experts, um, and they'll build short run or single uh, cables of whatever length, size, termination styles you need. Um, okay, so all I did obviously was was uh, unscrewed the 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 two coax connectors. You can see that we still have the ground strap connected. We still have the connection to the head unit. We still have the connection to the, the, the speakers on the front of the machine. And we still have the power connection. But even with all those connections, I believe, yeah. That's enough for me to show you. It's pretty neat, really. Um, the two slots here. Um, obviously are, are, are very carefully machined to match the, the, the factory bumpers. Um, but the slot also uh, has a, a fixed depth. It doesn't pass all the way through the machine. So it's just that simple. This rig just slides into that slot, boom, and it's not going anywhere. Um, it's, it's resting securely. You've got uh, enough room, not much extra room, but just enough room for your connections and for some cables and so forth. Um, and on the other side, we've got uh, uh, a space for the, the cooling fan of the rig to uh, exhaust into. Uh, and I realize that when the can is here and the machine is installed, um, it might seem somewhat occluded. But the fact is, it's a direct path right here, right? And that comes back out here and into the whole interior. Um, so far, uh, with an awful lot of... Uh, of, uh, of testing and so forth. We've yet to even have the hint of a heat issue. I don't ex expect there will be. Um, that said, if you were in an extremely hot environment or if you knew you had a reason to worry about it, just slide it out of the can and just run it like this. Um, what else here? Uh, microphone pocket. And the mic can slide in like this or like this. Uh, I will say, like I kind of alluded to a moment ago, it gets crowded, okay? It's going to get busy in here. Um, now, like in, in this case, mostly for the video, we just put a Velcro wrap around this to neaten it up a little bit. But you can appreciate that if you fed your microphone cord in here, plugged it in, and then had the mic occupying that space, it's going to get tight in here. It's going to get busy. Um, now, what we have been able to do, and I just didn't want to do that for the video, um, because uh, it's easier to, to show you how the radio comes out. Um, uh, zip tie this bundle to the grounding strap. It would be an obvious thing to do to, to hold this down out of the way uh, so the microphone cable has a, a, a more natural uh, space to occupy. Um, now, one of the things that I think is really cool, this battery. Uh, we're at the point now where we're building our, our own uh, LifePo 4 packs. Um, we've got our own uh, LifePo 4 cells that are being made for us that uh, we've done uh, uh, an intense amount of, of testing and, and uh, uh, we do a lot of that anyway, but happily now we've been able to do it for our own purposes. And, uh, and, and so far our own batteries are, they're probably averaging about 10, 15 percent over spec in, in actual performance, you know, and that's using load centers that are designed to draw the battery down at, 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 uh, at, at various rates and very accurately record the actual energy that's, that, was, uh, that was stored and, and consequently retrieved from the battery. Um, but one of the benefits of building our own batteries, look at the form factor of this thing. It's, uh, it's, it's one cell thick yet it occupies virtually the entire bottom of that ammo can. Um, really, uh, I, I honestly, I don't think we would have been able to make this machine if we were uh, restricted to uh, OEM batteries. Uh, this really necessitated uh, our own form factor. And, and happily, we're doing that more and more. 
uh, we got some neat stuff coming along those lines. And, and that said, the battery connection is just Anderson's, okay? Uh, so Bungie just holds this battery from moving around. The Anderson's, of course, connected to the rest of the system. So if for some reason, I mean, it's unlikely because the, the life span is so long on these batteries, but if for some reason you needed to swap that out, uh, it wouldn't even take tools. Um, and interestingly, if for some reason you needed this battery, I mean, it is 280 watt hours of, of 12 volt LifePo 4. If for some reason you needed a battery, like right away, and a strong one, um, you could slide these bungees aside, unplug the Andersons, and you've got a lot of power in your hand. Um, what else? Um, kind of nice. The uh, if you if you have a 7100, it came with a power cable, including fuses and the correct power connection, um, and it came with uh, with a, a mounting bracket and some other incidentals. Uh, if you buy a commander, it comes with everything you need except the radio. You don't even need the 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 ICOM power cable or the fuse holders. Um, you just need the head unit, the rig, and the separation cable. The commander even comes with the correct uh, uh, four-pin Molex style power connection uh, that's routed directly through uh, the blade fuses um, and interestingly the uh, the power to the rig is available even with the system dark okay um, and, and you know years ago we started doing that on all our gear after a lot of feedback it is pretty nice especially if you're in a dim environment to be able to, to have the machine dark and still have it power your, your equipment. Um, now that said, if you want to charge the machine or if you want to track outgoing power or if you want to use the USBs, then it does need to be powered up. It's not going to accept a charge without the main switch on. It's not going to activate the, the power analyzer unless that switch is on and it's not going to fire up the, the two uh, USBs unless that's on. Um, now. The two Andersons are also, though, directly to the battery. They are unswitched. Right now, these have power available. Um, main reason we do that, a 33 amp hour LifePo 4 is a lot of power. Um, depending on what the, the user is going to try to do, they might try to pull a lot of power here. And that's fine. The batteries will handle it. The wiring will handle it. It's all good, except if we slave these Andersons to this DC switch, we risk this switch being overwhelmed. Um, uh, and there again, it is nice, even with the machine dark, you can pull power out of these. Um, okay, so the two antenna extensions, um, uh, I mentioned earlier that, uh, that Wi-Fi experts make, makes, uh, this is the, the grounding, uh, stud that's connected, obviously, to the grounding, uh, uh, stud on the back of the radio. Um, uh, two, um, three watt speakers. I tell you one thing, especially like with the 857 and the 891 and, and, and to some extent with the ICOM, uh, you know, these makers are trying to put a lot of uh, stuff into a small space and the speakers is one of the, one of the obvious places to start compromising on, on space and size. And these little speakers are just fabulous. If, you, if you're used to how uh, a rig like the 7100 or an 857 or something, if you're used to how that sounds with the factory speaker that's built in, Wait till you hear it with this. It's great. Um, now that said, you can also plug in headphones. And if headphones are plugged in, uh, you can defeat the speakers. So obviously you could listen uh, uh, privately, quietly. Um, but if you're in a noisy environment, like a MCOM situation, or other people need to hear the radio, but you have to really hear it, then uh, you can leave the defeat switch off, listen with headphones, and the speakers continue to work. Pretty cool. Um, this opening is meant for you to route whatever additional wires or cables. Uh, you know, if you're if you're running, uh, 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 forgive me, um, not a, 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 a tuner, but uh, like some of the digital modes or any other things that, that that are connected into the back of the of the radio. There's room to run those wires here. Um, which hopefully that's just a, an example of making it flexible enough that, that you, can, you can make it do what you need it to do. Um, I think, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, so 
Uh, anyway, this system ships uh, complete. Um, if complete means all you need is your rig. Uh, it comes in the, the ammunition can. Uh, it comes charged, ready to roll. Um, uh, obviously, the AC charger is built in. Um, uh, solar panel is compatible, is easy to find. We sell one, but you can buy them pretty much wherever as long as it's a 12 volt rated panel um, and as long as it's uh, not more than 60 watts. Um, other than that, it's all automatic. Built in three stage solar controller, built in three stage AC charger. Um, oh, uh, yeah, I'm glad I didn't forget. One other thing. Uh, we've got a, a, a BMS built into the system, which is, uh, which is for the uh, LifePo 4 batteries. And uh, part of that BMS is, uh, is a low voltage disconnect. Um, and that's important because if you want to damage LifePo 4, that's probably the best way to do it. Run the battery way down under voltage and let it sit there for a period of time. Um, and I don't mean minutes, but like days or weeks. If you just let the battery sit neglected, you'll shorten its lifespan. So uh, here, uh, this is just a standard 30 amp thermally operated breaker. Um, that slaves to the uh, to the Andersons. So right there that tells you you can pull 30 amps distributed off of these Andersons with no trouble at all. Um, but one of the interesting things is the small momentary push button here. What that does is that overcomes the low voltage disconnect. Let's say for example you were running the rig or you left it on or you're using it for a really high draw purpose or maybe the battery uh, status just got away from you and you, you ran it down below like 11 volts. Um, at that point uh, really the battery should be stopped from, from uh, dumping more energy and that's what uh, our low voltage disconnect does. It's going gonna, it's gonna to literally uh, disconnect the battery from the entire system. It's all going to go dark and it's going to go dead. Now when that happens, clearly you need to charge the battery. When you then go to charge the battery, whether that's solar or AC, the low voltage disconnect is still disconnected, right? It's still protecting the battery. So you'd plug it in as if you're going to charge it and then just hold this button down a few seconds. I've seen it take as long as, as a minute if the battery is really depleted. But uh, it doesn't take long. Just hold that down. You'll see the system come up and start to charge and then let go of the button. And when you let it go, if it continues to charge, you did it long enough. <laughs> if it doesn't continue to charge, hold it down again for uh, another 30 seconds or so. Um, uh, but this might seem awkward, but it's actually a very elegant, very effective solution that, uh, that protects uh, your LifePo 4 battery. These batteries are not cheap. And... Uh, <laughs> And we, we build them carefully, and we're, we're, we're kind of proud of them, and we sure don't want you to, to spend hard-earned money on a nice battery. And then just because life intervenes or a situation got out of hand or you didn't realize how dead it was, that you actually just damage it. Um, so, happily, it'll protect itself. And I think that's it. Um, I keep saying that, but I actually do think that's it. All right, folks, thank you so much for your time and attention. Again, this is the new Commander 7100. It's on our website. We'd love to build you one. Uh, come to portableuniversalpower.com, and we will see you there.